Hey guys, welcome back. Last lecture was about identification of graph problems. Now let's see how we can approach the problem. If you are really new to graphs, you might be thinking how these fascinating mind-friendly structures are actually shown in memory, how these logical connections will be represented, and how we are going to create, use, and process them in code, right? So the first thing that everyone should know if they are going to solve graph problems is their representation in memory. One naive way of representing a graph can be maintaining an array or a list of all the edges present in the graph. See this? This is the first edge, which starts from 0 and set 1 and is having a weight 8. And below it, we are having all the other edges. We also have this edge starting from 1 and ending at 0, which is having weight 8, which is the same edge that we took here. But as this is an undirected graph, we have to consider each edge in both the direction. So this is, you can say, one a way of representing the graph. But this is not the solution we are looking for. We're looking for something much better as this is going to take up a lot of space and will be very inefficient. So let's see the other relevant graph representations. Graphs can be represented using adjacency matrices and adjacency lists. We can choose one of these ways according to the need to represent the graph. See this graph? If I have to represent this graph as an adjacency matrix or as a 2D array, then the size of that 2D array or the matrix will be 5 cross 5, as there are 5 vertices in this graph. So there will be one column and one row belonging to each vertex. So if the first row belongs to vertex A, then all the cells of this row will indicate whether a direct connection or an edge exists from vertex A to all the other vertices, including itself, that are labeled here as columns. So here the graph is an unweighted graph, so we can indicate the presence of an edge between those vertices by 1. There is an edge going from A to B, so this cell will be having value 1. Similarly, we do have it from B to A, so the cell for B to A will also be having this value. And this is true for all the edges in this graph. And the absence of edges is represented using zeros. If the graph is weighted graph, then these cells indicating the presence of edges or connections will be containing the edge weights of respective edges. So here we are having an undirected weighted graph where there is no single direction of edge, right? We can move either from A to B as well as from B to A. So we can say A is adjacent to B and B is also adjacent to A. So the row for A is going to have a value for vertex B or column B. And in the same manner, B is also going to have the same value present for vertex A. So this is how all the cells will get filled up. Now, if you observe this matrix, this matrix is symmetric along the diagonal because it's a matrix representing an undirected graph where if A has a connection to B, then B also has a connection to A. So this way, all the mirror cells get filled, resulting to the symmetry. Now let's add directions to this graph. Now B is no longer said to be adjacent to A because there is no direct edge from B to A. We only have a single direction for this edge which is from A to B. 
That's why row belonging to A will be having B as an adjacent node in this adjacency matrix. But the reverse is not true. And here see, this graph is having six edges, so there will only be six cells that will be filled with the value other than zero in this matrix. And this matrix is now no longer symmetric. So this is how we can represent a graph using adjacency matrix. Here in this example, we have labeled the nodes with alphabets, but in code, these vertices are going to be represented by array indices because it's a convenient way. But still, if we want to label them with alphabets or some other text, then we would have to create symbol tables for them where we can map them with indices. Now, the next way of representing a graph in memory is using adjacency list or adjacency sets. In this representation, each vertex of the graph represents an index in an array or in a list. And there is a list or a set of all the adjacent vertices to that vertex at that index, which belongs to that vertex. For example, see this vertex 0 or this vertex A, it has B and E as adjacent vertices. So at index 0 or at the index for vertex A, it will be having a list containing B and E. Similarly, B is connected to A, D and C. So A, D and C are the adjacent vertices to B. So here we will be having a list with all these three vertices. Similarly, at index 2, now at index D, and at index E. This is the representation for unweighted undirected graph. For weighted undirected graph, we will be having this representation. And if the graph is directed, then this adjacency list representation will be having half of the number of vertices that we were having in the undirected representation. So here A is having B and E as adjacent vertices, but now the reverse is not true. So that's why the number of vertices, the number of vertices in this overall representation will reduce to half. So these were the ways in which we can represent a graph. Now let's talk about when to use which representation. If the given graph is a dense graph where a lot of edges are present in the graph, then the adjacency matrix is a good choice because we will be able to utilize the cells with the edge weights. But if the graph is a sparse one where there are very few edges and number of vertices is high, then oh, the adjacency matrix representation is not a good choice because the very few cells will be consumed to store the edge cost of those edges and there will be a lot of redundant space. Whereas in adjacency list representation, we will be having small lists of adjacent nodes at each at the respective indices. So that's why if the graph is a sparse one, then adjacency list representation is a good choice. So these were the choices we first have to make in order to start the solution. Once we get there, everything else then is solved logically. So this was all for this lecture.